What's up guys, Patrick here, moving on to another word problem dealing with quadratic equations. So a ball is thrown off a 15 meter building and reaches a max height of 140 meters at five seconds. How long is the ball above 95 meters? So here, let's uh, draw a diagram of this scenario. I feel like that would be a good first step. So we have the height of the ball and then we have the time. So we're told a ball is thrown off a 15 meter building. So that means here, at a time of zero, the ball is being thrown off a height of 15 meters. So it's thrown up, reaches a max height at five seconds of 140 meters, and then inevitably has to fall back down to the ground. So notice that we can label this here, five seconds, 140 meters. So we know that this coordinate is five and 140. This coordinate here we know is zero and 50. At a time of zero seconds, the height of the ball is 15, basically the height of the building. And what this question is asking is how long is the ball above 95 meters? So notice 95 meters, this is not to scale, by the way, but let's say 95 meters is somewhere here. So over here, 95, over here, 95. So at this interval, the ball is going to be above 95 meters. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to solve for time one and time two. And then we could take the difference between those two times and that will give us the interval of time at which the ball is above 95 meters. Question is, how do we do that? Well, let's first get step one, an equation. Or a function that models the height of the ball with respect to time. So notice that we're given the vertex of this parabola and we're given a coordinate 0 and 15. So we could put this in vertex form and then solve for the a value. So we know the height of the ball is going to be the a value t minus 5 squared plus 140. That vertex 5 and 140 like that. And then we could solve for this a value by plugging in this coordinate here. So we could plug in 15 for h and then 0 for t. Uh, and then we could solve for this a value. So the way we can do that is bring this 140 over 15 minus 140 that would give us what? Negative 125. And this would be negative 5 squared, so 25a. Divide both sides by 25. So a would be negative 5. So the equation um, that models the height of the ball with respect to time is h equals negative 5 t minus 5 squared plus 140, like that. So the equation that models the height of this ball with respect to time is h equals negative 5 t minus 5 squared plus 140. So we have the equation, so what can we do now? Well, to solve for these times here, we can plug in a height of 95. So we could figure out with this equation, when does the ball reach a height of 95? So step two, find time when the height of the ball is 95. So we would use this equation, plug in 95 for h. So we'd have 95 equals negative 5t 
15 minus 5 squared plus 1, 40. Now, from here, multiple ways to solve this. You can expand everything here. So you'd foil out this bracket, distribute the negative 5 in, uh, bring the 95 over, then you could throw it in perhaps a quadratic uh, formula, or you could factor. But if you remember from previous videos in this section, you can also solve this by isolating for the t, so without expanding. So you could bring the 140 over, divide both sides by negative 5, square root both sides. So let's actually do it that way. So either way works, and whatever answer we get here, you may actually want to try the other way, where you expand everything, bring everything to one side, put in a quadratic formula or factor it. But uh, I'm going to do it the, uh, the other way. So bring the 140 over, 95 minus 140, that gives us what? Negative 45. So that's going to equal negative 5t minus 5 squared, like that. We could divide both sides by negative 5. So negative 45 divided by negative 5 gives us 9. This would be um, t minus 5 squared. Then to isolate for this t, we got to get rid of this exponent so we could square root both sides. So square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. This is t minus 5, like that. So there are two cases. Either t can be, uh, or uh, sorry, this left side can be positive 3. So that would be positive 3 equals t minus 5. Or this left side can be negative 3, t minus 5. And isolating for t, bring the negative 5 over. 3 plus uh, 5 gives us 8. And then here, bring the negative 5 over. Negative 3 plus 5 gives us 2. Right, so those are the two answers. At a time value of 2 and a time of 8 seconds, that's when the ball is going to reach 95 meters. So this here is 2. And this here is 8. So the question is, how long is the ball above 95 meters? Well, it's going to be this interval of time. So it's going to be 8 minus 2. So the answer is 6 seconds. Right? Because at 2 seconds, the ball reaches 95 meters. And then at 8 seconds, it comes back down to 95 meters. So between 2 seconds and 8 seconds, that's when the ball is above 95 meters. So that is a 6 second time interval. Right, so two steps. We first found the equation with the vertex and that y-intercept. So we solve for that a value. Then once we had the equation, we could find out when does the ball reach a height of 95 meters? And there's going to be two answers there, which we got. And again, at this point, two ways to solve it. You could do it this way. <clears throat> um, but if you're used to expanding everything, using the quadratic formula or factoring, you can do that as well. So you can take t minus 5 times t minus 5, foil it out, distribute the negative 5 inside that bracket, bring the 95 over, so you have 0 equals some kind of quadratic, then throw that quadratic um, in the quadratic formula, you'd get these two answers, or you could factor, it's going to factor smoothly, you would get those two answers as well. So multiple ways to do this step, but in the end, you get the same answer, 6 seconds is how long the ball is above 95 meters.